Hello and welcome to my seventh O-Scale layout construction video. Uh, to, picking up where we left off in the last video, I was talking about some wiring. This is some 18-2 solid wire that I used for the, and am using for the uh, switch controls and also some uh, accessory wiring. Uh, I like to buy this wiring in bulk because I use quite a bit of it. The 16 gauge uh, stranded speaker wire is used for track power. Uh, this is a mistake I've made in the past was to use lamp cord wire or others, you know, less, uh, lesser quality wire, let's put it that way. And this speaker wire I found to be the best to use for DCS, TMCC, and legacy systems since we're running our uh, command systems. This is the diagram that shows the uh, uh, my hand-drawn layout um, plan for the staging yard, which we put on some aluminum sheet and then cut out. This is to have a, the, the control switches, LEDs, um, for the staging yard. There's the sheet. I ended up buying a fairly large sheet and I could cut out to sections to use to build different control panels around the layout. Yeah, we're running a command system, but I'm a little old school and I like to have physical switches. Um, so got the, uh, the template laid out, drilled out the holes, and then started to place the switches uh, where I'd like them. Then um, through this pat last winter, actually, this has been a little while ago, sat at home uh, in front of the TV and started soldering it all together and wiring it up. And there's the front side of it. And basically these LEDs are both red and green. They don't, they kind of look a little pink in the uh, video. But uh, when they, when you change direction, they change color. So that way you know which way the uh, switch is pointed. So again, I'm using raw switches with tortoise motors. And this gives an indicator of which way they're uh, they're facing. And then once I got that ready to go, then I now here it is installed in the layout. And I'm wiring it up from behind, uh, nice and clean on the front, but a lot of wiring on the back. So here you can see the different colors. The yellow depicts actually where the trains are. So this shows that there's the trains or other tracks are occupied. Different color lighting when the room lighting is on or off. And behind that, I mounted up a piece of three quarter inch plywood to get ready to mount uh, other controls, uh, terminals, that type of thing. Here's the terminal connections that are going out to the different switch machines. The start of it. And as it moves forward here, you'll see the board start to become more and more populated with wiring. And uh, this is the, the initial since it's gotten cleaner since then but so the yellow wires you see in the background that's the uh, the track power then the white over on the left that's the uh, the switch motors and then the far left are the uh, uh, basically the track indicators it's the back side of the panel so going out to the track indicators I use all category 6 wiring since it's all low voltage Track power is AC, but all the other controls are DC, actually. So, pretty good sized board. I have plenty of room to, to work with here. Now, the primary, again, this is for the staging yard. Uh, going forward for the rest of the layout, some of it will feed from here, but they're going to be individual stations at the different control panel locations, which I Right now, I'm, I'm guesstimating about four locations will be. The other side of the board, this is where we have our DCS control. We'll have TMCC also. Uh, don't know if we'll have legacy. We're more DCS users. So one layout we're using, uh, with sin one single layout, we're using one TIU, uh, which for our, our setup is sufficient. Uh, we looked at possibly having a second TIU which you can run in super mode, but uh, for our needs, it, I don't think it's necessary. Basically, I've divided the layout into four zones. You can see the uh, the uh, the red and the black lines are coming from the the pair of uh, MTHZ four thousands. Basically, they're coming through uh, fourteen gauge solid copper, feeding into the relays and then to the TIU. Out of the TIU and it has signal, that's when it converts then to speaker wire. And it goes out to each track. 
So this next scene, I thought I'd talk a little bit about tools. Um, for some of you, this may be a little uh, be unnecessary, but I thought I'd share a little bit about what what I'm using. This is the miter saw I've used, um, which has been value, very valuable tool, very valuable. Uh, this uh, one of the cordless drills I use uh, with spare batteries. Most of the uh, uh, time I've been using Torx. Some some Phillips, mostly Torx. Got a uh, bench press. Don't forget your safety goggles, gloves. Unless you like splinters. <laughs> Went through a plethora of drill bits, lots of drill bits. And uh, this is probably the newer set. I think this next set coming up here is well used and pretty worn. But that's way that's the way it goes with tools. Uh, this is an old set of blue point I've had for decades that I use for all the metal metal work. Next pieces are some some Dremel. Uh, my dad picked this up, and I wasn't sure about it at first because I always use the uh, saber saw, but I found this to be an invaluable tool. And these Dremels, all these, we have a a couple more handhelds. One here is on a pigtail that I use for any type of grinding and taking off any burrs off the track. And then the next one has a cutoff wheel on it. Again, definitely want your safety goggles on with this stuff. Um, they, this stuff will fly off, and, and I've had one come off and hit me in the face before, so you got to be careful. Different hand tools, uh, knives, saws, side cutters, pliers, etc. A couple of different soldering guns I use. They're different wattage. And let's see, a couple of testers, very invaluable. It's great to have an amp tester, an ohm tester. This little blue point on the right has been a valuable tool. I've had it for decades also. A couple of shots of some of the uh, the trains. So a little, little action there. And I thought I'd throw some of these these pictures in here. They're, things have changed now. There are some older shots. But I think what it, what it shows here is that with the railroad, it's ever-changing and evolving. So you lay track out. You know, you get a feel for it and then decide, no, not quite right. You make some changes. So I thought I'd leave these up here to show you that, yeah, here's how some things were, but they're not that way now. Um, close. Again, we just did a little revision, kind of move things around. But at the same time, this allowed us also to, to run a little bit of trains to kind of to scratch that itch, so to speak. Um, all work and no play gets a little boring. So I'm able to, to uh, enjoy the trains. And, and uh, and have a good time with it. So just a few more shots here of that. This is over in uh, scene three, is where that is. And uh, from scene three, looking north to scene one and two. And then finally on scene one. It's interesting to see these because so much has changed. All right. That's pretty much coming down to the end of it. Thank you very much for all your support. I appreciate the positive comments. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.